Alright, so this is going to be the demonstration for the horizontal groove weld, otherwise known as the 2G project. Now first I want to say that this entire project is going to be welded using E718 electrodes. We are not going to be using 6010 at all, not even for the root. We're going to be using 718 for the root pass, the fill passes, and the cover passes. Now just really quick, some items that you're going to need. You're going to need a pair of pliers or vice grips just to handle the material while it's hot. A wire brush to clean the welds after chipping the slag off. And a chipping hammer to, of course, chip the slag off every single time you uh, finish a welding pass. And, of course, a good set of stick welding gloves. Now, to start the 2G project, you're going to have three pieces of metal. The first plate that you're going to get is going to be beveled. So it's going to have a straight edge on one side, and it's going to have an angled edge at the other. You're going to have a second plate that is square edge on both edges. So this one does not have a bevel. And you're also going to have a longer, smaller strip of uh, steel, which is going to be called the backing bar. Now, when you're tacking these pieces together, you're getting ready to assemble and weld them. The beveled plate is going to be on top of the joint. Then the second plate with the square edge is going to be located at the bottom of the joint. And then the backing bar is going to join both, uh, both plates from behind. So let me go ahead and tack weld these pieces together. That way you'll have a better, more clear idea. Now before tack welding them together, what I found to be the, the most efficient method to get the right fit up is to flip them both over so that way you're looking at the back side. You're going to take a ruler and you're going to measure them uh, to a quarter of an inch of a root gap. All right, so the blueprint that you were provided go off of that for the root gap for this course it's one quarter of an inch and then once you get that down go ahead and set the backing bar on top right in that root as evenly as possible and then without moving any of the pieces go ahead and tack weld them together now earlier i said that we're using 718 for this entire project but for something like tack welds i'll go ahead and i'll use 6010 and so this is how our project is going to look before we start welding it. Again, our single bevel plate is going to be on top and then our square edge plate is going to be on bottom with a backing bar behind both. Now with the root gap being one quarter of an inch, there is going to be some wiggle room for your electrode, even if you're using the one eighth inch electrode, which is, you know, good size. But don't worry about that for right now. Let's just focus on the root gap. You're going to want to re-verify or recheck your root gap to a quarter of an inch because if the uh, if the plates moved while you were tacking them at least you just have tack welds those are easy to break so that way you can refit your pieces together and then tack weld them again if you need to um, otherwise if you were to weld the backing bar on completely and you find that your root gap is off well an entire weld is going to be a lot harder to cut out and break versus a few tack welds now if everything checks out and you do have quarter of an inch root gap, then you can go ahead, flip your project over, put a couple of stitch welds on both sides of the backing bar, and you'll be ready to start welding. However, there's a big thing that you probably noticed already, and before I start welding, I want to point it out. All these pieces of metal, the top plate with the bevel, the bottom with the square edge, and the backing bar haven't been cleaned. They're pretty dirty, they got mill scale, they got rust. So all of these things can create problems for us while we're welding and especially when it comes to uh, testing the welds. So we want to make sure that we start off with clean metal before we actually start welding. So what do we do from here? Because this is the kind of material that we're going to be getting in shop. Well, you're going to want to take them over to a grinding station and you're going to want to clean it up. And I have these three pieces here that I cleaned up beforehand. So let's take a look at those real quick. So as we take a look at these pieces, you want to just take note of how I've ground down the plates to shiny bright metal. Um, pretty much any part of the plate or the backing bar that the weld could come in contact with, you want to grind it down to shiny metal. 
And the reason why we grind so much or we, we want to care about grinding and cleaning up our materials because if we don't and any kind of residue or contaminants get into the weld, that can appear as a discontinuity later on after the weld is finished or even as a weld flaw, something that'll cause our weld to fail and thus it'll cause us to fail uh, a weld test. So do the extra prep work now so that way we can better our odds of success later. Okay, so I've got the pieces tacked back together, and this time, not really a gap to speak of, although I did get the uh, backing bar shifted over a little bit. You can see, again, that the entire joint is nice and shiny metal. This is going to uh, reduce the risk of contamination, contaminants in our welds, uh, which will lead to, to possible defects. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tack weld this to a fixture or sorry I'm going to tack weld this to a piece of scrap metal that's been placed in a fixture and then we'll go ahead and start welding. Okay so we have our 2G laid up where the bevel is on top the flat edge plate is on bottom. Now the reason why we see some discoloration here, this is just a heat infected zone from a couple of welds that I placed on uh, the back side on the backing bar. So just uh, securing the backing bar to both plates a little bit better, uh, more than just the tack welds. Now when we're coming in with our electrode, like I said before, there's gonna be a little bit of wiggle room in here, okay? So we're not gonna do anything fancy, no whipping, no moving. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna come straight into the root with our electrode. And if anything, we might angle up just a tiny bit so that way we can concentrate some of our weld on this upper edge, so the bevel because gravity is gonna to wanna to naturally pull our weld down. So you can have a little bit of a upward angle. And as you see fit, depending on how you're reading the puddle, you can have a little bit of a wiggle, but you're not doing any kind of excessive weaving, just a, a little bit of a wiggle. And that's not gonna be a consistent thing all the way through. This is just as needed, depending on how you're reading the puddle. So, very first thing we're going to do is we're going to come straight into the joint. Alright, so it might look a little angled in the video, but I'm coming straight in. You can drop your angle or drop your electrode down, so that way you can bring your weld up a little bit if you need to. And you're going to have a slight drag angle, so everything should be drag. Alright, so drag. So my settings, my machine is set to 135. That should be uh, just right for getting the root pass in. And then I might drop it down to 130 for the fill, but we'll see once we get to that. So just for now, 135 for the root pass.
So now for our second weld, we're actually going to still the same thing, come straight in, but we're going to bring our electrode holder up, which is going to drop the angle of our electrode. And we're gonna to wanna to focus this weld uh, towards the bottom plate. And we're gonna overlap this first weld by about half to two thirds. So you still wanna keep everything really nice and tight close to each other. So that way our, our second weld doesn't immediately come out. We wanna stay within the root, but we're just gonna slightly weld the, this bottom plate while overlapping this first weld. So you're gonna come straight in, angle down just slightly, and then again, a drag angle, and you're just gonna weld right across. Okay, so we laid down the second pass. What we're gonna do now is we're going to prepare for the third pass. Now the third pass is going to be put in uh, right on top of the second. So we are going to overlap the second pass a little bit. We're gonna completely cover the first pass, whatever remains of the first pass, and then we're also going to have some of this weld um, be placed on this beveled plate. So, where the second weld was kind of done at a lower angle, the second weld, or sorry, this third weld is going to be done with a little bit of a higher angle. So instead of going straight in, we are going to drop our hand, which is going to bring our electrode up, and we're going to focus our welds right about in here. So we're going to, this is our work angle, we need to have a drag travel angle, and we're just gonna drag our electrode like so.
All right, so that was our third pass. Now we're gonna start the, basically start the pattern all over again. Now we're gonna start with our fourth weld down here, followed by fifth weld and then sixth weld. So the fourth weld is gonna be placed in just like the second where we're gonna angle our electrodes slightly down so that way we can cover up or we can overlap this weld and then also place some of the weld onto this plate. So we're going to come straight in. We're gonna bring our hand up just slightly so that way it brings the tip of our electrode down. And then we're gonna have a slight drag angle and we're basically gonna start our weld and continue on just like this. Now, if you look closely, you'll be able to see that much of the weld actually meets this upper edge of this lower plate. You can even see a couple of spots where the weld slightly rolled over. Now, I wanted the toes of the weld to pretty much meet the edge, but not roll over because this is still technically part of my, uh, my fill pass. So I still have two more welds to deposit and that's gonna help fill it in a lot more then I will place welds on top of those and that will be considered my cover pass so if this weld were to go too far over that corner over this edge it would make depositing um, not a perfect cover weld but a desirable cover weld it would make it a lot more difficult because now I have part of another weld that I need to cover while coming up and covering this top plate so it just it, it's putting more reinforcement on top of extra reinforcement and we want to keep our weld uh, from hitting you know that point where it's too much reinforcement and if you're asking well how much is too much anything over one eighth of an inch over or uh, past the surface of the plate is considered too much reinforcement so we want to make sure that we fill this in as much as we can without coming past the surfaces we'll leave that for our cover pass so now for the fifth pass this one's going to be pretty much just straight in so we're not going to angle down we're not going to angle up this one is just going to come straight on in and we're going to overlap this weld approximately half to two thirds while also trying to bring this weld up a little bit and fill in a lot of this gap because with the sixth weld, we're actually going to angle up, cover that weld while also placing it on the remainder of the bevel. So we got a little bit of work to do still.
Okay. So we laid in, well, that was our one, two, three, four, five. That was our fifth pass. Now with our sixth pass, we're gonna go straight in and we're gonna drop our hand, which is gonna bring our electrode angle up. We're gonna wanna cover the fifth weld by you know, one half to two thirds. And then also trying to get a lot of this weld focused on that beveled plate. So again, we're really trying to fill this in because the next series of passes are gonna be our cover passes. Okay, so for the first pass of our cover, we are going to start at the bottom, just like all the other uh, weld, weld patterns. So we're gonna come straight in, and we're just gonna weld like so. We're not really gonna angle down, we're not really gonna angle up. Now we can angle up if we see that our weld is drooping down too far, but we can just come straight in and we're not actually going to point the electrode at the edge. We're going to watch the weld puddle and we're going to watch the, the toe of the weld kind of drop down over the edge and that's what we want to focus on. So our electrode is going to be up here, but our the edge of the weld puddle or the toe is going to be somewhere around here. So that's what we want to focus on. So we're going to start our weld, come on in and just go straight across and we're gonna watch the toe of our weld to make sure that it kinda of comes over the edge, but not too much to the point where the bottom of our weld is really droopy. We want it to be a nice smooth transition from the weld to the base metal, okay?
All right, so there are a couple spots where I'm a little worried about, especially right in here towards the end where I slowed down my travel speed. It's drooping down a lot. Not too much, but I wouldn't want any more than that. So now for the second cover pass, pretty much the same thing. But now, because I did see that there are some spots where my weld was a little droopy, I'm actually going to come in and I'm gonna drop my hand to bring up my work angle and I'm just gonna use that to fight gravity so that way my weld doesn't droop so much at the end and there's a nice transition from the second cover pass to the first. So I'm gonna to wanna to overlap this first cover pass by at least half, maybe two thirds. All right, the plan is to have at least three welds in here as part of the cover, but if we need four, then we need to make sure that we weld uh, appropriately so that way we can fit a fourth pass in there and not have it look too out of place. So I already had this piece of slag just chip off by itself and I'll show you just how easy this stuff is really coming off. All right, almost no effort at all. Okay, so for the third cover pass, I'm gonna come in with a slight upward angle drag on it and just go right across the top, overlap the second cover pass. And it looks like I might be able to call this my last cover pass. I'm gonna have to be really careful, go slow in some of these larger gap areas, uh, but not slow enough to the point where my weld really sags. So I'm gonna see what I can do. Okay, so upon closer examination, I can actually see that there are spots where they're underfill. Some would call this undercut, but it's actually underfill where I didn't quite get enough weld material in there to bridge the gap. So I'm gonna have to run 
a fourth pass on top, but it's gonna be a really fast weld pass. Just enough to fill in the rest of it and also create a nice smooth transition on top of this weld and the base metal. So I'm gonna have to really run this fast. Alright, so it looks like I was successful with that fourth, really kind of rapid, fast pass. And that's pretty much what we want to see. So now I'm going to go ahead and let this cool by itself. Let it cool maybe, uh, you know, away from a vent so that way it doesn't cool down too fast. I'm just going to let it cool down completely uh, by itself to where I can touch it with my bare hands. Uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and proceed with cutting the coupons out and I'll show you how to cut or how to lay out the coupons uh, once it cools down. So for now, this is this is the finished product. This is what we want to see.